You know, I've got to know. Is my head too fucking big? Just want to know. How you doing, friends? This is Ernie with the Trader of Futures. And it is Thursday. Man, this week goes by fast, like every week goes by fast. You know, as you get older, time gets compressed. Where a year, back when you were a teenager, felt like forever! Now, a year feels like a fucking week in comparison. And that's a sad commentary. So what you need to do is you have to make sure that you fill up every single minute of your day with something useful, something that you can look back on and record it. (laughs) Kind of like what I do. Because it's amazing when you go back and you look at the body of your work and then you and it's recorded. If it wasn't there, it, it all becomes just vapor and you forget. We don't really forget, but there's no reason to remember a lot of cases. So, yeah, make sure you fill up your day with with shit to do. Really, really important. Yesterday, uh, we did a lot of very cool stuff. We looked at um, what it really takes to create a system, a trading, a systematic trading operation, and um, what it takes to create a bunch of strategies that you're going to put into play, and, and then the work that is required to constantly update and keep those strategies fresh, because we know that no strategy lasts forever. No trading strategy lasts forever. And that's what I'm, I'm showing right here. This was part of that, that work. It was very, very high level. But I think it was very useful too. And I'm going to go over it a little bit today. And, um, and then I'm going to talk about each one of these, these individual processes. Because there is this big process and then there are sub-processes inside each. And they are either serialize, you know, one begets the next, or they overlap one another. So the one that overlaps all of them, of course, is this one right here, the show. That is actually your your live trading positions. And all these little circles in here represent the different strategies that you have on at any one time, or that are active. Now, that doesn't mean that they necessarily have a position on, but these are the strategies that you're running. And you can see that there are different colors in here, and uh, each one represents a, a unique strategy. Um, and, and someone asked me yesterday, well, how do you know, Ernie, how do you know if they are uncorrelated to one another? What does that mean? And that is, that is really the key. If you want to know the secret to trading, I say it often, and a lot of people don't understand what I'm talking about. I say it so often. I say that um, trading multiple non-correlated strategies is the holy grail to trading. It is. It's not an easy thing to accomplish. When you have a very small account, how do you trade more than two or three things at a time? Like if you have a $5,000 account, really the only option that you have then is the type of asset that you choose to trade. Because different assets have different size requirements, like futures, especially E-mini and uh, mid-size future contracts. They require a lot of margin, and to put on two or three futures contracts would require you to have at least a $10,000 account, but more likely a twenty or a $50,000 account. But if you only have like a $5,000 account, what do you do? Obviously, futures, unless you restrict yourself to only micro-sized futures. Obviously, with futures, you're limited to what you could trade. And probably the most obvious thing to trade would be Forex. Now, of course, that is, and then you're just talking about one market. And that's okay, as long as you have different strategies that you can apply. Because with Forex, you can create micro-positions. You can create positions where you can control as little as a thousand units of a currency. Now, you're not going to make money very fast with a thousand units of a currency, but 
That gives you the capability to trade multiple strategies at one time with a very small account. And it would be a good way to get into and, and start understanding all of this. Now, today's, um, today's talk, what I'm talking about is trading with volume profile, trading with a strategy, trading with the assistance of an artificial intelligence. Now, when you look at this here, this would be wonderful if you could have this all set up. You have this big process. You have this curation process. You have the big strategy factory process. You have your stuff in here. You have a, a, a much larger campaign process that is um, periodic in nature, and every three months after running a particular campaign, you reset and then you do a retrospective and you figure out where you are, what you've done, what has been the efficacy of what you've put on there to, to trade, whether or not it needs to be updated based on your curation of, uh, of strategies that are here in stasis waiting to be put into the show. That would be wonderful if you could do that. I mean, that is a lot of work. And people, they'll pay people a lot of money to help them keep track of this, or they'll do it all themselves. Of course, if you have a job, that is a very difficult thing to master. So what do you do? Well, there are a couple of things that you could do. One is that you could take the time, hire someone like myself as your coach and mentor to teach you how to do all of this and bring you through the paces. Of course, that would mean that you'd need to be able to support yourself. Maybe you already have that ability. Um, you could go to work for a, um, for a prop trading firm or some other trading firm and, and see how they accomplish this very same thing because I can guarantee you virtually every prop trading firm and institutional trading firm and every hedge fund are doing some form of this. Or you could use the assistance of something that can do this part of it for you. Do the, the strategy factory and the curation and then serve you up the strategies for you to use. So it is essentially a, um, a black box. A black box. Let's, let's do that. It will be a black box. And that black box is constantly outputting strategies for you. And we've got, uh, you know, Little, little strategies. And these might be in the form of just alerts. So you're going to have to have some kind of requirement. Of course, you've got to pick the right black box. You can't just pick any old black box. Let's see, we need more strategies. More strategies! We need a green strategy. So you need something that can constantly be supplying you with, with data, things, entries, exits. And it's not really necessary that you know what those strategies are as long as you know that there's a low degree of correlation between them. And what does that mean? Well, let's see what that means. 
Yesterday I had talked about you measure correlation by taking a look at um, the returns that a particular strategy has over a period of time. And then you can measure all the returns by putting them into a, uh, a matrix and then using a program like Excel and apply the Corel function. I believe that's spelled C-O-R-R-E-L. And it will create a, a matrix of all of these strategies and their returns. And um, it'll look probably something like, um, like this. And it will be a grid, let's say, of four strategies. And there's a strategy here. One here. Let's do one this color. Let's do an, let's do a um, blue one. Now, of course, when you um, when you compare the output of this strategy versus this strategy, it's the same strategy. Its, um, its correlation is going to be perfect. It's going to be 1, as will all of these be 1. Right? But then when you compare, say, this guy to this guy, maybe it's um, 0.3. And maybe um, this one here. is, um, I don't know, 1.2. Maybe this one is uh, 0.1, right? That's what you're looking for. You're looking for that correlation. So, when you can find enough of these, now first of all, the correlation, the correlation coefficient is on a scale between negative 1 and positive 1. Anything that is perfectly correlated, in other words, every time one asset goes up, the other one goes up doesn't matter how much, just that it does at the, in the same time period. When one goes down, the other one goes down. If that happens all the time in every time period, then that's said to be perfectly correlated, and it would have a correlation of 1. If instead, when one goes up, the other one goes down, and that happens every time, then it would have a correlation of minus 1. But if there was no correlation, that sometimes it went up, sometimes it went down, sometimes it went in the same direction, perfectly uncorrelated, then it would be have something close to zero. If something isn't um, correlated, it has a very low correlation coefficient, it's probably somewhere in the area of 0.5 to 0. That, that's the kind of correlation that you're looking for. When it starts getting above 0 0.5, 0 0.7, that is too heavy of a correlation. They're being influenced by the same thing over and over, even if it gets down on the negative side to negative 1, because it could be inversely correlated. That's also not good. So that's what you're looking for. You're looking for 
anything around zero, a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left of zero. And again, in Excel, I believe this is the Corel function. And what you, and the way you do it is you take the hypothetical returns or the actual returns of a strategy over a long period of time, you put it in a spreadsheet side by side, and then you apply the Corel function and it will create this matrix for you. Now there are software programs that can do that for you. They're typically pretty expensive because <laughs> a lot of, not a lot of people understand this stuff. There are some um, online web-based tools that you can use that will show you the correlation between various stocks and ETFs. And that's, that's pretty neat. And uh, I might talk about those. But, you know, this is what you want. You want something that will produce things, entries and exits, utilizing uncorrelated strategies. And if it comes out of a black box, who cares? As long as there is some historical proof that the strategies that this black box outputs are relatively good, you know? So, you know, maybe it um, wins 65% of the time with a um, maybe at least a 1.5 or a 2 to 1 uh, win to loss ratio. That would be considered good. And maybe it only has uh, a periodic 10 or 15% drawdown. And that wouldn't be too bad. And those strategies are relatively easy to come by. There's, there's a lot of ways to create strategies like that. Uh, but it's hard to find a lot of them. It's hard to find ones that are consistent. What most people that are creating strategies are looking for specifications that are way better than that. Way better. Because they're not trading multiple non-correlated strategies. They are usually looking for one strategy. And they're looking for the perfect strategy. Hardly ever, ever find it. Ever. It might work for a little while, and then it just falls off the cliff. And that's going down the wrong path. Just going down the wrong path altogether. Yet, that is virtually what everybody in the industry is pushing. Their strategy. Their fantastic strategy. It's the balls. It's not. It's a fake. Getting a little, uh, there we go. Clean up that lens a little bit. <clears throat> and that's why most people lose, because they're relying, they're attached to strategies. Some, of, some people, most people, aren't even attached to a strategy, never mind a strategy. Some people have no idea what systematic trading is or trading by the rules. They don't even have a strategy. So do you think that they have any chance of achieving, of achieving success? Well, they may, they may. But those people are few and far between and those are people that have an innate intuitive sense or a tremendous experience with the markets. And they're, or they're lucky. <laughs> They could be lucky. There's no doubt. They could absolutely be lucky and choose good trades a lot. And that happens. And I've talked about that a great deal. There are people that are just fucking lucky, and we hate those people. All right, so you could, you know, hope that you're lucky. Or you could use a black box like this. Now, our black box does this does it all automatically. All of this has been programmed into a neural network and it finds the strategies, it curates them, it spits them out. But it does way more than what you could do as an individual. As an individual, you might be able to manage, you know, 10 or 15 strategies. Our AI creates literally millions of strategies it hardly ever puts out the same strategy 
twice. And so the correlation is very low from one to the next. And it's why we're, re we're achieving such fantastic results. We are now on, um, I think, day trading day 135 with only one losing day. Only one losing day. Uh, well, I'm sorry. There's been probably two flat days. I don't know if you would call that losing. That is what the system has produced. Now, your ability to actually take those signals and put them to work, you know, that might be a completely different story. Some people, you can put them next to the best trader in the world, and that best trader will kill it. And they'll be sitting there trying to copy him, and they'll still lose. So there's no accounting for that. But at least with something like this, at least with something like this, you're given excellent opportunities. And now all you have to concentrate on is execution. Execution. Which isn't a trivial thing, by the way. Executing goes hand in hand with understanding your tolerance and capacity for risk. The size of your account. The size of the assets and the assets that you choose to, choose to trade in this, in this paradigm. Still up to you. There's still a lot of decision making. But what has been taken away and given you relief is a good strategy factory, curation, and non correlated returns. That is what we offer. That is what I offer in the AI setups. It's a fantastic tool, unparalleled. Now, the other thing that I had put in the, uh, the title of this particular um, show today is, you know, trading with volume profile and doing this. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. And um, the reason why I put the two together is that although we have not programmed any volume profile knowledge into this system, not a bit, not a lick. It doesn't know anything about volume profile. It only knows patterns. And these patterns we can't even really define. We just put, like I've said in the past, the uh, phonetics, the alphabet, the bits and pieces, and then it assembles it into patterns that it finds over decades of data. And it can do this, again, because it's a neural net using high-speed computers. And it can put all this stuff together and find things find strategies that work, just patterns. I mean, if you were to go and look at the database of, of the neural net, it would make no sense. It just looks like, like static. But the neural net knows. It can, it can see these patterns. And so it does this all for you. So that's good. Now, where I was bringing volume profile in is that one thing that I've noticed and we've marveled at and wondered, well, maybe we should put volume profile into this. But we say, why? It's doing it all on its own. The techniques and the analytical methods that I show on how to use volume profile, which is widely regarded as the number one tool for professional traders, institutions, prop trading firms, hedge funds, any of them that are doing any kind of discretionary trading on top of their systematic trading are using volume profile and market profile. It is the number one tool for the pro. The number one tool for the pro is not price action, it is volume. They use price action to support that, but it is volume. Yet most retail traders are completely oblivious to this. I had a, uh, as many of you know, I had a, um, a debate with Tone Vase, the famous Tone Vase. And he told me that I don't use volume because I don't understand it, and you don't need it anyways. And I said, you're a fucking fool. And then after I showed him volume profile, he became a fan, and now he starts talking about it. <laughs> Still a fool. But what we've noticed is that all of these setups 
that the black box, the AI, the black box, all of these setups that the black box produces, the levels, the entries, the exits, the performance, every single one of them are right on the edges of vo value nodes of the volume profile. We thought, wow, that is so cool. It's like, it's like the AI knows. Anyway, you know, it doesn't really know. It, it just, you know, it just obviously is natural that that's where, uh, that's where supply and demand meet at the edges of those profiles. So it makes sense. So from a discretionary point of view, when you see the system that can look at virtually all the data that the market has ever produced and then find those patterns, and then they align perfectly with, with the structure of the market, then you know from a discretionary point of view that that's where you want to trade. That's where you want to make your decisions too. Just makes sense. All right, I've been talking for a long time. Uh, Von Jara wants to know, how many setups per day are these intraday or overnight trades? Uh, they are predominantly overnight trades. Uh, intraday trades are virtually impossible to produce regularly with any kind of um, validity. Uh, they are more like um, on the low end of short-term swing trades. We give everything about a four to five day window. One day for, the, uh, for that session for the setup and then four days for it to um, realize its target. And um, not, uh, right now we target about 80% but we have shown that 90% of all the setups that trigger are profitable. 70% of them reach the target or beyond. We, um, right now, well, I'll give you, I'll show you uh, last night's setups. How's that? And you'll see how many there are, but that's not how many get triggered. This is the number of setups or scenarios that our um, AI produces, and we're working on actually increasing this number to include more uh, to include more equity positions. Right now it's futures, forex, and some equity. But uh, we have a, a programmer that is working on this full time because producing all this data and actually communicating or interfacing with the AI is not the easiest thing. It's not, it's not like uh, it has this wonderful human interface. <laughs> it doesn't know us, and we don't know it, and so we have to kind of figure out how to communicate with it. Um, Let's see. We have to go to here to see this. So last night, these were all the setups that, uh, that were out. Yesterday, we had a pretty good day. Uh, four of our setups came in and, uh, were with winning positions, no losers. And uh, so the streak continues. But here you can see the um, orange ones are the equities that we've put out last night. The blue are the Forex and the rest are futures. And that changes day to day, sometimes more equities, more futures, or more Forex. Of these, on average, at least up to the past few weeks, we've been averaging about 35% of them triggering. But we've been producing fewer of these. Now we're producing more because of our ability to create more. However, volatility has, has um, dramatically decreased over the past few weeks. And 
that has um, the direct result of fewer of these triggering. So we are still triggering, you know, one to four of, of the setups that we put out there. Occasionally none. And maybe, um, I don't know, between seven and 15 a week. And as we produce more and more of these, and we're able to like produce maybe, you know, 10 or 15 equities, 15 futures, 15 Forex pairs each night, then it's going to be a matter of, well, what do I choose? You know, you'll be able to, you'll have a lot of flexibility in what you want to choose. And you can be fairly certain that um, most of them will be uncorrelated with each other. I mean, that's, that's how the system is designed. That's because the strategy that was used to extract that information is hardly ever reused. We have a reuse rate of the strategies that is infinitesimal. Our system can produce literally millions of strategies, millions of patterns that it sees over long periods of time. And very rarely do they actually um, use the same strategy. Once in a while, it happens. But over the big picture, simply not, not that many. All right. So before I started the show, there was someone that uh, wanted to point out a, um, a service that's out there. And um, so I, you know, I entertained it and I looked at it. And then I, it, the, the guy, Crypto Crown or something like that. And they say, you got to, hey, if you want to watch and, you know, somebody that is a real trader, a real professional go and watch him so i went i looked at him and found that he was trading crypto that was the first thing i said fucking real trader a professional trader and that's what he does he just trades crypto and then i went to his website and i saw that he charges eighteen hundred dollars to take his course on how to trade crypto and this is the real trader someone said that hey people that are coming to my thing you gotta go and watch this guy Holy fucking Christ. Now, Mark Burbot is saying, Trader Glenn, if you think people are paying 1800 for this is bad, Hyperwave, that's Ch Tyler Jenks and Leah Walds, are charging $1,000 for learning Hyperwave, which Ernie says is bullshit. Now, what I mean by bullshit is that Hyperwave is nothing more than what everybody else already knows about the pattern of a bubble. All right, and I guess uh, Tyler Jenks can now discern or be able to um, tell when something is going to be entering into a bubble phase. And for this, we need to pay $1,000. Why? It just doesn't make any sense. Why is that necessary? So Frank is saying, uh, are they correlated to protect each other from... Uh, other or more to pick up the winner. I don't know what that means. They're uncorrelated. Like if AI gives 10 calls, do I have to trade all of those calls in the same time? No. Uh, no, you don't. Well, first of all, they're not calls. They're setups. And not every setup triggers. Like I said, prior to the past few weeks, about 35% of them would trigger. So first of all, you know, and we may only have four or five or six in there. So that means you'd only, you know, um, have to trade one or two in that night. Now we're, we have many more, but there is fewer that are getting triggered. So it's still about, you know, one or two a day. Um, and you don't have to trade them all. In fact, you can choose what fits into your, your account, your size, the amount of capital that you have how many that you can put on at any one time or the way you choose to trade them like with forex you have a lot of different choices i mean you can trade a full size um, unit which is a hundred thousand units or 
a mini unit, which is 10,000, or a small unit or position, which is 1,000 units. That means you could take up $3,000 worth of capital, or $300 worth of capital, or $30 worth of capital. With the futures, there are a lot of futures uh, products that have both full-size contracts and mini contracts. Some of the mini contracts are one-tenth the size of a full-size contract. With, um, with stocks and ETFs, I mean, you can choose 1,000 shares or you can choose to, sh to trade one share. So all of that, those are the type of choices that you can make. Besides taking, you know, some or all of the trades, most all of them are uncorrelated to each other because the, um, the strategies are hardly ever repeated. So, yeah, so maybe that answers your question. How exactly do you, do you define correlated? Well, you're not listening, Mark. <laughs> I went through that. Correlation is, um, is determined through a statistical function called the correlation coefficient. Um, people can look at correlate. You can go online and there are correlation tables and correlation web apps. And you can see the correlation between stocks or ETFs. Um, we could go to the CME group and I can show you the correlation between um, uh, between assets. Hold on, let me let me show that. That would be kind of an interesting thing to do. Uh, CME group. Let's bring it over here. Oh, wait a minute. It is up here. Cross asset correlation tool. Now, another way that you can you can calculate correlation for yourself if you have the historical data of a return of a strategy, you can take all those that um, those returns of multiple strategies and then put them into a spreadsheet and then apply the Corel function uh, that's available in Excel and it will create the correlation matrix. Uh, I, I showed, I demonstrated that on uh, right here where I showed that you can use the Corel function and each one of these circles represents different strategies, their returns and then, it, and then the Corel function will create a matrix like this and tell you, you know, whether or not something is perfectly correlated or not. Now, here is a similar matrix that was created. It shows the correlation between assets uh, fut of futures contracts. And uh, so you can see the different types of assets. We have grains, meats, metals, energy, indexes, interest rates, foreign exchange and you'll see as you um, do one against the other it has a perfect correlation because obviously if you do gold against gold it's going to be perfectly correlated but if you do gold against silver you'll see the correlation is 0.81 it's pretty highly correlated uh, you can see that um, oil is highly correlated with heating oil 0.9 and with gasoline at 0.91 there are some that are very low correlations. All right. Now, these are just um, based on the asset prices. These aren't necessarily the, um, you know, applying a strategy. But the reason why people might want to look at the correlation between futures assets is if they want to do pairs trading. Because pairs trading, you would do the exact opposite in trading strategies. In pairs trading, you want to find two highly correlated assets and trade them together and trade their relationship between them. With trading strategies, you want to trade a whole bunch of strategies that are uncorrelated so that their assets and uh, their pricing do not fall on the same uh, till. Um, you don't want to be in a bunch of strategies that when the market goes down, all, all your strategies go down, right? You want them to be uncorrelated so that if the market goes down, you're, not, you're kind of protected against that. You're hedged against it because 
all the different strategies are not based on just pure market um, price action. They're based on a, a wide variety of things. And that's why you want to have things that are uncorrelated with each other. That's why you need to, and, and that's what our black box, the AI setups does. That's exactly what it does. It produces literally millions of uncorrelated strategies and finds setups and then puts them out as alerts. And then you can choose between those. Our black box does this that I explained yesterday. It's constantly has a strategy factory and it's constantly looking for new setups and strategies, patterns over decades of data. It then evaluates them and then pushes them out. What I was showing here yesterday was, you know, how you would do this by hand. How a person would do this. And then explain that, well, this is exactly what institutional traders do. Institutions, prop trading firms and hedge funds, this is how they operate. This is precisely how they operate. And we put all that into a, a, uh, an AI and it simulates that. It does a damn good job of it, and we've proven it over, over a year. Not hypothetical results, real results. I spent four or five months last year just putting out these trades with like a 95% win rate. That's how we attracted our, all of our customers, you know, to date. We just started this um, service back in October. And uh, now we've attracted uh, the attention of some um, introducing brokers, and they're going to want to start introducing this to their customers. And that's why I've been raising the price, because there's going to be a, a great deal of demand coming down, down the road. So if you want to get involved with it now and lock in the price that is now, you can do that. But uh, this is the result of years of work, really good work. Um, so anyways, let's go back to the questions. Chris Corey says, I think it's funny that the more valuable your live streams are in terms of real useful knowledge, the less viewers you get. Yeah, isn't that funny? However, if you go to um, any of the scammers that are out there, they're attracting tons of people because people want to hear, you know, unicorns and fairy tales. That's what they want to hear. They don't want to hear the real stuff. Well, thanks, Chris. I really appreciate that. Chris says that uh, I'm getting a lot out of today and yesterday's stream. Frank says... Are they correlated? Okay, we already read that. Um, how do we define correlated? We already did that. MDIS is just providing more bullshit. No ETF for Bitcoin anytime soon. Sorry, that's true. There will be no ETF. What is, what is he say I'm being discredited on? I never said people wouldn't partner with Swift. I never said any of that. Just bullshit, right? All right. I've had enough of uh, MDIS, really. Um, I'm going to give you one more chance to produce some, you know, relevant information. Otherwise, pff, gone. R really don't want to deal with it. Last chance. How you doing, Pat? High voltage. Your head is, it's normal, not big. Oh, good. <laughs> it's good to know.
So, the other thing that I've been working on, uh, well, I, I wanted to talk more about volume profile. I did the correlation, right? Did that. We could talk a little bit about volume profile. And um, yeah, well, that was your last chance, MDIS, so I'm sorry. Gone. Oh, that felt so good. <laughs> the FOMC minute looks like we're back to rate hikes. Hey, Ernie. Thoughts on the NASDAQ introducing uh, Bitcoin and ETH uh, indices and JP Morgan coin to take out XRP. Um, I don't really have any thoughts on that, uh, really. I mean, it is all just stories. We've seen these stories over and over and over and over again, and nothing has come of it. You know, a lot of people were talking about Bitcoin and uh, the, um, and we'll go to the charts. You know, this, this move up as being, you know, some, some great breakout. And I'm looking at it and I'm going, what? Wait, where's the breakout? <laughs> I can see it's pulling back now. I don't know. It might go up higher. I still stick to my, my guns and say that we're going to stay inside this yellow zone for the next two years. There's a possibility on the outside that uh, we move up here. But I highly doubt it. Maybe only temporarily and then move back down. The technology simply isn't there, guys. It's not there yet. It's not going to achieve widespread acceptance unless somebody comes out with some killer service or product based on it and can show that there is an ROI and it's not going to cost too much. It's not going to cost an arm and a leg to implement. That it's understandable and safe. But none of that is true. None of it. I don't care if J.P. Morgan and Swift are looking at this thing. It is nothing but an experiment for them. And if it turns into something that's useful, fine. It'll be an edge case. That's all it will be. And maybe that will help the whole crypto revolution to, you know, to, I don't know, gain some traction somewhere down the line. But I don't see it happening for quite some time. Really don't. I'm still following uh, things that Hedera Hashgraph is doing. And uh, I know that they're making some ingro in inroads into gaming and other places. And again, the whole ecosystem will expand gradually and, ex and contract, expand, contract. It'll have its ups and downs. And I see that as basically sitting inside of this yellow area for quite some time. And that's it. I just don't see much else happening. I don't want to waste my time. Not, not until something substantial, when there's so many other things out there that really deserve our time and attention. Instead of fairy tales, unicorns, and rainbows. Uh, Von Jara wants to know, I, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing, but uh, will I be able to have access, uh, accuracy on setups per instrument? Uh, yeah, we're, um, we're talking about that uh, to produce, you know, a, um, when you say accuracy, I, I think what you're asking is what's the historical... Uh, returns on something like that and uh, it's just extra information that I'm not sure that is really useful um, but we can pr we can produce that we've been thinking about putting that out there so that people can at least see 
what the uh, historical returns of the strategy that the AI chose is. And we could certainly do that. It just, in order to do it, though, it, it's a lot more work for us because we have to then copy and paste the chart and put it in, you know, the alert and all this other stuff. If we can uh, automate that somehow, we'll do that. But, um, you know, I'm telling you that our parameters are very, very strict on which things that we put out. And, uh, and, and the proof has been in the returns that we've been getting on this. All right. So while some people may need that proof for them to see it every day, I, I don't know why. Because it is a black box. We give you what the parameters are. I understand that you'd like to see it. And all I'm saying is that right now it's hard for us to show it only because of the, um, the effort involved in actually creating the alerts every night and the number of alerts that we create. But we're working on it. We're working on automating every step of the way. We think that in six months we'll have, you know, pretty much everything that we really want to produce stuff like that and as well as produce a wide range of, uh, of setups. How did the AI behave when we got the Huawei sell-off on December 23rd? It was no, I, I didn't notice that at all. As a matter of fact, I believe that back then we, um, we were doing exceptionally well. Like I said, when, when volatility is higher, um, automated systems tend, and trading in general tends to be better because there's more volatility, more range in, in the market. And when there's more range, there's more opportunity. Uh, and it's easier for a pattern recognition system to, to see patterns when there is a higher peak and trough uh, or the pattern is more, more distinct. So, um, yeah, there was – all I can tell you is that, um, like I said, you know, one bad trading day in 135 since starting this. I, I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Uh, Anthony Bracado, how you doing? Uh, why would NASDAQ add BTC and ETH indices in four days? Expanding and contracting is a good thing. Slow growth is what a crypto buyer wants. Uh, well, the CME group has um, Bitcoin up there as an ETF as well. I'm not as an ETF, but as a, a, a future. You know, I, I, I don't see the point. You know, I mean, it's okay, so it's maybe introducing it to more people, but most people are ignoring it, quite frankly. They don't understand it. It's not, it's been going down in price. People, you know, I, I you know, I, I just don't know how to answer the question. So I really don't care. It's not mainstream, it's minor. You're not going to get rich off of it. Maybe, you know, maybe this stability that we see over the next couple of years will be good for it. You know, we'll be able to get some good data from regulated markets. But that's the big problem. There haven't been any regulated markets. And maybe introducing this to the NASDAQ or others um, will, um, will produce a little bit more regularity in it. And we'll get some, you know, something worth trading. But I don't know. Ernie, which Forex brokerage uh, do you recommend? And do you have a full tutorial or can you suggest one on how to analyze and trade Forex? Uh, well, we don't um, have a tutorial on how to analyze and trade Forex. I have volume profile that will show you how to trade anything based on its volume. Then, of course, with Forex, there, are no, there is no volume, but we use tick data, which is essentially 95% accurate. Um, there is a tutorial when you when you join the service. Everybody's required to uh, to take it, and uh, it explains how to trade the setups and uh, what to expect. But um, in terms of forex brokerages, man, there's so many out there. I would choose a um, a broker that also carries equities and forex, and that is. Um, how should I say, established. You know, one of the big brokers are good, like 
a TD Ameritrade with Think of Swim or a trade station, although they don't do Forex, they do futures and equities. Uh, interactive broker is good, you know. Somebody big that can handle the volume and have good support, you know, any of those are good. Um, we've recently had very, very bad experience with Rwanda. They've essentially ripped us off or ripped off my, um, my partner. Um, and that's bad and never, never provided any, any um, support on top of it. And so we're filing lawsuit with them. So I, I have nothing but bad things to say about Rwanda. Um, most of the smaller Forex brokers are bad. Uh, I'm sure that there are some good ones, but most of them are bad because Forex is largely unregulated, and so it attracts the scum of the earth. That's why you need to stick with a bigger broker that offers Forex and um, where you have support. All right. Wow, I can't believe they've already gone through a whole hour here. <laughs> Amazing. Bitcoin Bob. He made it through the hour. So I'm glad everybody showed up here. Please give this video a thumbs up. <laughs> And uh, click that little bell icon. Share the video with other people. I'd, I'd really appreciate it. That's how I get my numbers up. I'm not so interested in, in getting big numbers on this channel, although it would be nice. What I'm more interested in is the, uh, is the engagement that, that I get here. And uh, people that uh, come here for that and they see the value, that's, that's what I'm more interested in. Uh, what is my opinion on Robin Hood? I, um, I don't have any experience with it. I've heard good things about it. Now, when, when you engage with a broker that doesn't charge commission, the way they make money is by introducing a larger spread between the bid and the ask. All right? So whether you're paying commission or not, you're still paying for the trade. So... What Robin Hood does is they introduce a slightly larger spread on the bid and the ask. So it's actually costing you more money to get into a trade and then to realize the profit when you get out. And that's where they make their money. Now, that's fine as long as you understand that. And, uh, you know, if overall... The cost of doing business with them does, is not materially greater than doing it with someone that's just a full commission broker. I, I have no problem with that. It's the same thing with Forex. Uh, most Forex brokers do not have any commissions, but they have tremendously huge spreads between the bid and the ask. And, you know, so you could get in here, but then you have to wait for it to go way up here before you can profit a penny. And that's how they make their money. Some Forex brokers have narrower spreads. Some are commissioned only and have fixed spreads. And then it's much more, e it's easier to, uh, to ascertain whether or not, you know, you're, you're getting a good deal. So, um, but I've heard that overall that Robinhood has pretty good service. And that's the most important thing is the service that you get. All right. I think we're wrapping up here. I'm going to uh, find the exit. Where is the exit? Maybe it's over here. All right. Thank you, everybody, very much. Please, again, give this video a thumbs up and share. I'd really appreciate it. 
Uh, I am uh, looking for the exit here. There it is, live control room. All right, guys, we'll see you tomorrow. I'm gonna tomorrow. I'm gonna talk uh, even more in depth about market profile. I have a course. I have a course on market profile. And uh, with it, you get live support. Hold on, I'll show it to you in a second. There's also a blog there that I'm starting to write. But if you go to AISetups.com, and we'll show you that right here. So here's AISetups.com. I'm writing this book, which is essentially uh, chapters taken directly from uh, the articles that I write on here. So here's, I've written four articles so far this week. I plan on writing uh, at least four or five more. Uh, this will um, all be compiled into the book, and you'll get that for free. And, uh, of course, we have the courses. We have the mental game, which is produced by my partner. It really is talking about trading psychology and uh, just rules of thumb and guidelines and things that you really need to internalize trading. And then the volume profile book, which is going to be a, um, I'm sorry, the volume profile course. This is an on-demand course that is similar to my, my live course, but this is all on demand. If you take the live course, you're going to get this volume profile on-demand course uh, as, as a reference. But uh, here it is right here. Uh, if you want the volume profile course. All right. Just created this website, so it's all pretty new. The course material and all that material is not new. Uh, I back up everything that I do. All right. Now we have to find the exit. There it is. Get the talking head back. Any more questions? Uh, Pete McLaughlin, thanks, Ernie. Great show, man, for very informative. Learned a lot today. Thank you, Pat. All right, everybody, take care. Adios, amigos and amigas. We'll see you tomorrow.